Hey gang, today I want to talk about how we got over our fears of going out in public and also, which also plays into our uh, self-acceptance and uh, you know, maybe we didn't have a lot to begin with, but how we got to the point now where we love ourselves and uh, we're quite comfortable with, you know, being who we want to be. I want Audrey to start this out because she's got a great, a great uh, story. So actually the first time I went out was Halloween of 1992. I went down to Boys Town in Chicago. I had been advised that I could go anywhere, so I had a bad costume. And I went in and met Frank who bought me a drink and wanted to hold my hand. And uh, so that was very interesting. I thought, well, I'll go out again next Halloween because Halloween is kind of a trans thing. But before the next Halloween, I had done some research and found a trans group. And so I wanted to go to the trans group, but it wasn't in Boys Town, so I felt left less uh, safe. So what I did was I had a Swiss Army knife, which I don't really know how I would protect myself with the Swiss Army knife. And I parked in the parking lot, and sadly there were no other girls in the parking lot when I arrived. I knew nobody in the whole world, and so I, I uh, unfolded the Swiss Army knife so I could be prepared in case someone was in a bush waiting to attack me. And then I wondered there were different doors in this, um, in this place where the uh, event was at, and I was afraid I'd go to the wrong door and go and walk into a bar mitzvah or a shower or something. But as it turned out, I found the location and then, uh, then I was on my way. And they were friendly and you got, and it was calming and... I'm not sure about that. I was scared to death. So I wasn't, I was, I was afraid that someone would attack me in the parking lot. But then when I got inside, I didn't know anybody and everyone knew each other. And there was really, there was just a person named Faye Bass who sold makeup. So she was welcoming me to everyone. And there's like, that's like a whole different thing to talk about the Faye Bass experience. You could probably get lots of people to do that. But so she was welcoming me. But then after I passed that, uh, people were off doing their own thing, much like support groups now. I think if you are new, some people are welcoming, but I didn't feel particularly welcomed or adopted. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't say that was at the meeting where I was told that I needed a girl name, not a boy's name. And you gotta so act more like a girl. You gotta act like a girl. That's what they so told me. So these things are time. revealed to us very slowly, but yeah. in that case, I found a girl's name that night. And so now, and actually, let's talk about that just for a second, though we're getting off topic, if that's okay. Is that I like lots of different girls' names. So there are times where I'm like, why can't that be Elise? Or, you know, some other. Well, you can. But I can, but you know what I hate is when in the trans community everyone changes their hair all the time and they're doing different things, so you don't know who they are anyway. And then they change their name and then you're completely confused or you call them by the old name and they're offended. So I've decided it's, you know, Audrey is it. I picked it and I'm living with it. Much like as if my parents had given it to me. I agree with that uh, way of thinking, uh, that mindset, if you will. Um, it's, it, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too many different things. <laughs> and and uh, continuity is, uh, is something that um, I think folks like us uh, should grab a hold of. You know, mm -hmm. the trans people are so brave that when you say why me, that why not me question comes out because we can handle it. That's why. That's why us. Because well, now I think it's awesome. So many things that I've done have been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it's been a blessing to me, but it wasn't always a blessing. Sorry, to me. When, when you learn to embrace your feminine side, it's a whole new, whole new world. It's it's, it's fantastic. It's and uh, so then you get to meet women and be friends with women and see how they're doing things. And to me, women are just awesome. So emulating women is really <clears throat> a lofty goal because women are nurturing, uh, supportive, loving, and as you, you know, men aren't always that way. So I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm a woman. I think it's awesome. Thirty years ago, I couldn't even look on, on a video on how to put on eyeshadow. Now, if you have a question, you can just watch a video. Um, you can learn from there. 
Um, and once you gain confidence, you can learn to take that first step out the door. And taking that first step out the door is just so exhilarating. And what was your first step out the door like? <clears throat> um, <laughs> Scary. I, I I can't watch another video of a trans woman walking in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> All I see is myself, and because I wasn't ready, I, I I went out, but I wasn't ready to be in public. But your first but, time. What was but, your first time? Uh, like? It was. It was. <clears throat> Scary yet, yet exhilarating. What I did you do? Um, I didn't. Basically, um, <laughs> I was in the shadows for years and years and years. Um, my first step out was was really with the the tea girl parties and stuff like this. All right, for years and years, I hid away. You know, so you went to a support, a support group right. or a, a protected environment the first time you went out? Correct. As I think we all did. And a lot of us stayed away for years as well. Before, you know, especially back before the internet, we were, we were on our own. So going out to me was the most mortifying thing. In fact, I swore to my wife I would never, ever, ever, I want to emphasize ever, go out presenting as uh, my female self. I have broken that promise. And, uh, well, I'm glad you did today. <laughs> this is my first day out, actually. So. <laughs> so, got some quick bullet points here to think about, to give you some tips to help you get a little more self-confidence so you can get out in the street. Or, no, that's bad. We're not ladies of the street. Not the street, and, uh, no. Don't no. dress like a lady of the street. That's the first mm -hmm. one, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, try to try to look at other ladies around you if you can find any other women around you, uh, cisgendered women. There are try lots to, of women try, out there. I've noticed. Try to take a look at them, and and I'm not telling you to dress like everyone you see, but find some ones that you like the way they dress, okay? And try to emulate that. If you appear like the basic cisgendered woman, and I don't want to start getting picked on for stereotypes and all this other crap. Well, I know we're not, we're special, we're fabulous, okay? So maybe we should be to act that way when we're out in public too. But we're not drag queens, so don't dress like one, okay? Don't make yourself up like one. See, look, she has a cold shoulder look. That's and very popular have, now. And you'll have uh, more confidence if you can blend in. I don't try to pass, I've said this before a million times, I don't try to pass. As soon as this pie hole opens up, everybody knows I'm, I was probably born as a boy. Don't think it. At least that's been my, my experience. I wear flats. I'm 5'9". I'm only 5'9", which is not that tall for a trans woman. Most trans women are taller than the average male. Most trans women are over 6 feet tall. That's a statistic that none of us like to hear, but it is the truth. A lot of supermodels are over 6 feet tall. I was kind of pleased to know that Charlize Theron is taller than I am. Well, that was pretty cool. So I can wear heels and, and rock those outfits too. You know, all I need to do is lose 100 pounds. And we might look similar in shape. Um, anyway, the flats are going to make me shorter. They're going to make me 5'9", and they're not going to make me 6'1". Okay? People aren't going to stare at you if you're 5'9". Uh, I know a lot of ladies that are 5'8", 5 5'9". 5 um, I, I weighed 225 pounds, and I had a 48-inch chest and 19-inch and biceps because I wanted to be a, a tough guy. Uh, I had to lose that mass to make myself feel more passable. No, I know there's a lot of larger trans girls out there, but you may be one that isn't as happy with your weight. If you're not happy with your weight, losing weight will make you feel better about yourself, more confident, and get into a, a, a size 14, size 16, maybe something like that. Maybe you'll feel more passable. I don't know. It's a tip. None of us can, none of us can or we can all benefit from losing weight if we're overweight. I mean, that's just healthy. Um, lean on your best friend. So if you don't have a best friend, get one. Okay? One of the biggest factors in me getting out, oh, big factor, best friend, same letters. That's cool. One of the biggest factors in me getting out and having confidence to do anything was that I found, I finally found a friend after 30 years in the community that I could relate to and we became soulmates, if you will, best friends, really the BFF. Okay, and we supported one another, we were there for each other, we protected each other, and, and so we had so much, we had confidence to begin with. What we each needed was that each other, that little extra push. 
Okay, so find a friend, go to a support group, meet some people, okay? And then there's strength in numbers. When you find out, you have to experience it, you have to go out there. You have to find out that people aren't trying to kill us everywhere out in the street. For most white, <laughs> transgender women, middle-class transgender women, we're, we're no danger. We're not sex workers. Those are the majority of the people that get killed are in the sex trade or uh, are find themselves in stupid places at stupid times. You know, don't go hanging around in bars at two o'clock in the morning and get a, get surprised when some uh, redneck drunk realizes you're trans and wants to kick your ass. Hey, get a clue, okay? So hang around in regular places, hang around with smart people, hang around at smart times. And none of, and really, I don't, I never feel like I'm really in any danger. Karen, I just want to say that if you present well. You, you really don't have to worry. Um, is, I just go through normal, everyday life, uh, shopping, bank teller lines, everything like this. If you present well, people aren't gonna say one word to you usually. And you I know? think the other thing is confidence. If you just are comfortable with who you are and you're confident, then people will pick that up, and I think that is also very important. And that's, you know, the tips I'm giving you are how to get that confidence a little bit. But yeah, if you walk around like you're hiding from everybody, you avert your eyes, you don't want anyone to look in. It's like when you come out to someone. If you come out to them and it takes you five minutes to get the words out and they're all stuck in your throat and it's coming out like my daughter said, oh my gosh, Dad, I thought you were going to tell me you had cancer. I thought you were going to tell me you were going to die. And I was just trying to tell her I was transgender. <laughs> so you got to, you know, I'm better at it now, but you got to, you gotta, you know, believe that you're healthy and, and that you're okay, and and there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You gotta figure out how to believe that, and it all stems from these tips we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And then get some help, get a gender therapist, and we're gonna talk about that in another video. Hey, that's about all we got for now, because I think we're going to we're going to we got three o'clock tea time. So uh, love and peace, all, and let's just try to accept one another for who we are.